Hi guys, this is Ivy from Lompley, here to be able to walk you through how to fill out the Paycheck Protection Program form powered by Cross River to hopefully make things a little bit easier. In this particular video, our entire focus is going to be 100% on how to fill out the Paycheck Protection Program form for non-employer businesses, such as independent contractors, sole proprietors, etc., who are applying for their second round of the Paycheck Protection Program. Let's get started. First things first, it's going to take you to a page that looks just like mine, where it's going to ask you for some basic information, like your legal business name, your DBA or trademark name if applicable, business email, business phone number, entity type, in my case we're functioning as an independent contractor, your social security number, business start date, number of employees, in this case it's one because we are an independent contractor, state of incorporation, otherwise known as where are you located, and your NAICS code. If you're not sure what your NAICS code is, it's totally okay. All you have to do is hit this bright blue hyperlink. This opens up a brand new tab and helps you to find that information. Once you gain that, go ahead and enter it into the form as shown. Next, is this a franchise, yes or no? Have you previously received a PPP loan? In our particular case, yes. Then it's going to bring up this section where it says, did you receive your PPP loan with Cross River? Yes or no. In my particular case, no. Then it asks, how much was the prior PPP loan amount for? Go ahead and get this information directly from the information sent to you when you were, when you were approved for your PPP. After that, it's going to ask for your business address. Go ahead and enter this into the best of your ability. The super cool thing with this is, as I can show you right here, it actually pulls it up directly here in a drop down menu. All you have to do is simply select it, it auto fills the rest of it, and you can press next step. Then it's going to take you to a page that looks just like mine, where it's going to have you enter in some information. Your first name and last name. Will be, this be the primary content for this application? Yes or no? And then it's going to state that the primary content will receive all correspondence regarding this SBA loan. Please ensure that you have access to this email address. It reconfirms the email address that you had on the previous page. Your social security number will have you enter in your percentage of ownership. In this case, where it's just us, we're an independent contractor, we're going to enter in 100%. Your date of birth, mobile phone number, position in the company. You can go ahead and click this drop down and it has options for an independent contractor. Your veteran status, gender, race, and ethnicity. After you fill out all of that information, it's going to then ask you for your owner home address. In our particular case, uh, it is the same as my business address. However, if it's not, you can go ahead and enter it in as shown on the previous page. Once you've filled out all this information to the best of your ability, go ahead and click next step. Please don't refresh the page. It does take a couple of minutes for it to load. It's just validating your information. Excellent! Now that you've gone ahead and filled out that portion of the application, it'll take you to a page that looks just like mine, where it's going to ask you to save your link. I strongly recommend copying this link and saving it somewhere else. This is how you're going to be able to get back into the application if you need to go back to it at a later time. After you copy that link, we're going to actually go through the questionnaire together. This has a whole bunch of questions. We're going to start at the top and work our way down. First, is the applicant or any owner of the applicant presently suspended, debarred, proposed for debarment, declared ineligible, voluntarily excluded from participation in this transaction by any federal department or agency, or presently involved in any bankruptcy? Yes or no? Has the applicant, any owner of the applicant, or any business owned or controlled by any of them ever obtained a direct or guaranteed loan from the SBA or any other federal agency that is currently delinquent or has defaulted in the last seven years and caused a loss to the government? Yes or no? Is the applicant or any owner of the applicant an owner of any other business or have common management with any other business? Yes or no? Is the applicant, if an individual or any individual owning 20% or more of the equity of the applicant, presently incarcerated or, for any felony, presently subject to an indictment, criminal information, arraignment, or by any other means by which formal criminal charges are brought in any jurisdiction? Yes or no? Within the last five years, for any felony involving fraud, bribery, embezzlement, or for a false statement in a loan application, or an application for federal financial assistance, or within the last year for any, uh, for any felony, has the applicant, if an individual, or any owner of the applicant, been convicted, pleaded guilty, pleaded nolo contendere, or commenced any form of parole or probation? Yes or no? Is the United States the principal place of residence for all employees that are going to be used in the payroll calculations? In our case, yes, it's just us. We're an independent contractor. Next, is the applicant a franchise that is listed in the SBA's franchise directory? Yes or no? Did your business experience a 25% gross revenue decline in 2020? Yes. And are you a highly seasonal business? Yes 
or no. Next, it's going to ask, in which quarters did your business see the greatest decline in revenue? Q1, 2, 3, or 4. In my case, I'm going to go ahead and click Q2 and hit Next Step. After that, it's going to ask us what we intend to use these funds for, or what's the loan's purpose. It can be used for any of the following. Payroll, property damage, lease and mortgage and interest, supplier costs, utilities, protection expenditures, operation expenditures, or other. In my particular case, we're going to be using it for payroll. However, click anything and everything that's applicable to you. After that, it's going to ask for your previous SBA loan ID. It's a 10-digit number. And how do you file your taxes? As a corporation, as a partnership, as a nonprofit, or in our particular case, it's other. After you've selected all that information, it's going to say annual gross payroll amounts. Please select your payroll period end date. All amounts and documents should correspond with this. Basically what it's asking is are you going to use your documentation from 2020 or are you going to use your documentation from 2019? In my particular case, we're going to go ahead and click 2019. Next, it has a whole bunch of information. We're only going to fill out what's applicable to us. So, if you're an employer that files Form 940, we do not fill out a 940. We're an independent contractor or a non-employer business. Next, if you report any self-employment income and file a Form 1040, that's us. We're going to refer to Line 31 Net Profit Amount and enter that in. Next, if you report any income as a partnership, again, it's not applicable to us, so we're going to continue moving forward. Then it's going to ask us for our payroll calculations. So it'll ask for things like your group health insurance, your retirement benefits that you pay yourself, your state and local taxes that you pay yourself, and the portion of your wages in excess of $100,000 a year. Again, where it's just us, this isn't applicable in my particular case. Afterwards, it's already calculated our average monthly payroll and our maximum loan amount. After that, it's going to ask for a quarterly loss verification. So it's going to ask for our revenue for both 2019 and 2020. So in 2019, we're going to go ahead and enter in the amount that we made in Q1, in 20, in, sorry, in Q2. We're going to go ahead and enter in the amount of revenue that we earned in Q2 of 2019. And then we're going to go ahead and enter in the amount that we earned in 2020. Make sure, again, it has to be at least a 25% decrease in revenue. After that, it's going to ask for your account and routing information. So it'll ask for your routing number and to re-enter that same number again. It'll ask for your account number and then to re-enter that account information. Once you've verified that everything is correct and complete to the best of your ability, go ahead and click Next Step. Again, just like on the previous one, it may take up to 10 seconds. It's just going through and validating your information. Please do not refresh the page. After that, it's going to ask you to confirm your business and owner information. So it's going to give you the opportunity to double check anything and everything we've entered into the form so far. So your general business information, additional business information, and loan information, as well as your owner information. If any of that seems incomplete for any reason, go ahead and click this bright blue edit button and it'll take you back into the form to edit. Otherwise, we're going to go through and agree to the application terms. First, it's going to have us confirm our identity. So we're going to go ahead, select the down arrow, and select us. Then it's going to have us make a couple of certifications. That first, you understand that by checking the box below, you're confirming that to the best of your knowledge, the business information you provided is accurate and complete. You have provided all of the owners of the business who own 20% or more in the company and a single control person with control over the company. The responses to the eligibility questionnaire are accurate and complete. The information provided in the PPP calculator is accurate. And this business is not an ineligible business that you provide its written instructions to Cross River Bank and its affiliates, agents, or third parties to obtain business and or credit reports in connection with this application, that you provide your written instructions to Cross River Bank under the Fair Credit Reporting Act, permitting Cross River and its affiliates to obtain one or more consumer reports. After you go ahead and you've clicked all of that, you're going to click this box right here that says you're electronically signing the authorization above and you give permission to Cross River Bank to obtain your personal credit. After that point in time, it's going to say, I understand based on the information I provided above, you will need to provide the following. Your driver's license, avoided check, your February 2020 bank statement, and your IRS Form 1040 Schedule C. 
Underneath that, it has a whole bunch of information about ineligible businesses. Feel free to read over this if you're not sure if you are, in fact, an ineligible business. And then you're going to click I confirm and agree to all of the statements above and click submit e-sign takes a couple of seconds and then it'll take you to a page that looks like mine where it says congratulations you've almost completed your loan application for the SBA Paycheck Protection Program loan. Again if you have not copied this link please do so. This is where you're going to be able to see when and if you've been approved for this particular application etc. Once you've gone ahead and copied that now it's going to state upload the required documents. There are four different documents that's asked us for so let's go ahead and find those. So we're going to click choose files we're going to start with my driver's license. It does need to be full color, it cannot be blurry, and it either needs to be a copy or it needs to be a picture. After you've uploaded it, click select file type and we're going to notate that as a driver's license. Notice there's a check next to it saying that it's in the system. Next, we're going to go to choose files. We're going to find a voided check. That way we can again put that into the system. It needs to be horizontal. Once it's uploaded, click select file type and we're going to click voided check. Next, February 2020 bank statement. We're going to go to choose files. I have in a folder called bank statements and we're going to click bank statement February 2020 and we're going to press open. After that, we're going to notate the file type as our February 2020 bank statement. Again, see all these lovely check marks and then our IRS form 1040 schedule C. Again, go to files. We're going to go to my documents and there's my 1040 and we're going to press open. After we validated that all of these are in fact into the system to the best of our ability. We've notated every single one of these documents that we uploaded and there are check marks next to every single one of these documents. It'll say, if next step button below freezes or is unresponsive, please refresh this page. This is okay. However, we're going to click submit documents. It's going to bring up this warning that states that this cannot be undone. Are you sure you're ready to submit? Please make sure that before hitting submit that you have verified that you put in the correct information into the system, you've uploaded the correct documents, and everything is true and correct to the best of your ability. Otherwise, you will run into errors and or delays. After that, if you are 100% ready to go, go ahead and click yes. Give it a couple of seconds for it to be able to go through the system, validate all of your information, and then it's going to take you into the next screen. From here it says application complete. Thank you so much for your loan application. They're working on processing your application. We'll be in touch soon. Essentially next steps from here is that they're going to reach out to you directly via email in case they have any questions, comments, concerns, or need anything else from you at this point in time. As mentioned, please hold on to the link that you copied before. That's how you're going to be able to get back into your application to check the current status. However, if you do run into any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to reach out to us directly.